Uh, hey bro, uh, in this video we'll talk about uh, human element and uh, these are uh, two concepts that you have to understand before uh, reading about stroke and before knowing uh, more about stroke and uh, these questions are frequently asked in uh, Vivas and human element is like a exam favorite so even though you know it, even though you've read it, this is just a quick uh, refresher so what is UMN? So the UMN and LMN both, upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron they are part of the corticospinal tract of the body. The corticospinal tract is also called the pyramidal tract. So what does this tract do? So this is a descending tract. Descending tract as in tract which arises from the cortex or from the brain and comes down to the spinal cord and then to the muscle. So this tract is essential for all voluntary movements that we have. All voluntary movements of the body are regulated by this corticospinal tract. So, and this corticospinal tract is made of two orders of neurons or two different neurons, the UMN and the LMN. The UMN is that neuron which extends from the cortex of the brain to the spinal cord. And the LMN is that neuron which extends from the spinal cord to the muscle. So this whole arc acting together gives voluntary movement. So if I'm doing this, it's happening and starting right here, coming through the corticospinal tract to my hands, to the muscles of my hands. Okay, so I'll put a quick diagram of the relevant uh, parts of the human and element. I'll just show you. Okay, so this is the cortex, right? A little pink, but okay. This is the cortex of the brain. So the cortex of the brain is made up of gray matter. Okay, so always remember in the spinal cord, the gray matter is in, in, on the outside, on the inside, and the white matter is on the outside. Whereas in the brain, the white matter is in the inside and the gray matter is in the outside so gray matter consists of the cellular nuclei so here i've drawn a section of the brain at the level of the motor area so there are a lot of these large cells called pyramidal cells in the motor cortex okay so this is where the uh, tract arises from and these are the cells from where the impulse uh, for movement and for motor activity arise so from the pyramidal cells the fibers okay so these are the axons of the pyramid cells actually so they come out and this forms the white matter so all these fibers rising from the pyramidal cells start coming out and they make a fan shaped structure and this fan shaped structure is called the corona radiator okay and then all these converge at a certain point in the in the cell brim itself not very accurate this diagram and all these motor fibers are very dense at a certain location at a certain point so that location is uh, called the internal capsule internal capsule so the region with a, a maximum density of the neuromotor fibers coming from the cortex is, is the internal capsule and that is why this is a really important region when it comes to stroke because because of the sheer density of the fibers present at the internal capsule if there is an infarct or a hemorrhage affecting this area, a lot, nearly 100% of the motor function is lost on the opposite side of the body. As you might remember, these decussate. Anyway, we'll get to that later. But what happens is, if there is an infarct or hemorrhage in this area, it affects the complete motor functioning. That is, the upper limb and the lower limb get completely paralyzed because all the fibers get affected. So this is something called tense hemiplegia which is a characteristic feature in a uh, middle cerebral artery stroke so the internal capsule is supplied by the branch of a middle cell uh, by a branch of the middle cerebral artery so any infarct will lead to tense paralysis or tense hemiplegia of the other side so coming down so we got through the pyramid the corona radiator and the internal capsule after that the goes through the midbrain uh, medulla I mean, midbrain pons and at the level of medulla there's a decussation decussation means that fibers go from one side of the body to the other side of the body so this is the right and this is the left let's assume okay so fibers of the right side decussate or cross over to the left side at the level of the pyramid and it's it's important to remember now 80 percent of the fibers cross over 80 to 90 percent and 10 to 20 percent continue downwards Okay, continue downwards. So now the fibers that cross over and go to the other side come to be called the lateral corticospinal tract. The fibers that continue downward 
are they called the anterior corticospinal tract so the anterior corticospinal tract doesn't decussate whereas the lateral corticospinal tract decussates and, dec- decussates and bulk or majority of the fibers are of the lateral corticospinal tract okay so same thing on the left side fibers follow you get the corona radiator you get the internal capsule here and then they decussate at the, sorry they decussate at the level of the pyramid of the medulla so decussate at the level of the pyramid of the medulla so as these fibers decussate right so these fibers continue to decussate and they keep going down and then from there they enter the spinal cord so this is the spinal cord and you have a lot of fibers coming down into the spinal cord now in the spinal cord you have the horns uh, the anterior horn of the spinal cord and the posterior horn of the spinal cord right this is how it looks so the anterior horn of the spinal cord is usually the motor region and posterior has a sensory so the anterior horn of the spinal cord the horns are the gray matter have the alpha motor neurons or the nuclei of the alpha motor neuron and this first order neuron comes and uh, transmits to this second order neuron which begins at the anterior horn of the spinal cord and from the anterior horn of the spinal cord goes to supply the muscle and this neuron which arises from the anterior cord of the spinal anterior horn of the spinal cord goes up to the muscle is called the lmn or lower motor neuron right it's called the lmn so um sorry yeah so now uh, just to review we just see a picture so the cells uh, or the neuron that begins from the cortex of the brain this is the motor area goes all this you get you get a fan shaped uh, structure here like this from all over corona radiator then you get the internal capsule and then you go down it passes through the midbrain through the pons and decussates at the level of the medulla to the other side goes down into the spinal cord and then goes to the alpha motor neuron in the spinal cord so this is the second order neuron of the lmn and from here goes to the muscle so first order neuron second order neuron muscle so this is so any lesion at any of these sites would lead to a umn palsy because this is the upper motor neuron and any lesion anywhere here would lead to a lmn or a lower motor neuron type of palsy so it just in brief from the brain to the spinal cord upper motor neuron from the spinal cord to the muscle lower motor neuron simple okay now let's talk about lesions so why is it important to know the differences because uh, our clinical suspicion and we uh, uh, is based on whether uh, the umn is involved or the lmn is involved so if the lmn type of paralysis or lmn type of uh, symptoms are seen then we start thinking about a uh, peripheral uh, nerve disease or a spinal cord disease whereas if the umn type of uh, lesions are involved or the umn type of lesions are seen then we start thinking uh, it could be a stroke or something higher or something above the spinal cord level or the something above the alpha motor neuron basically and it also plays an important role in motor neuron diseases but since uh, we are looking into stroke and this discussion is stroke oriented we will be talking about how this helps us differentiate stroke so what the type of paralysis which we see in stroke is most commonly the umn type of paralysis so what are the features of umn type paralysis and how are we going to remember them okay so firstly since the motor uh, nervous system is involved we have to think of all the uh, we have to categorize by thinking of all the motor examination points so what all do we look at when we examine the motor system so first is the bulk of the muscle the power of the muscle the tone of the muscle right tone is very important what is tone it is the passive resistance offered by a muscle or the resistance offered by a muscle to passive motion okay so tone of the muscle is important and lastly the reflexes are very important so these are the four things which we look into and we are going to discuss the differences in each of these headings in the umn and in the element lesion okay so coming to the first thing power there is reduced power in both umn and element slightly more in element maybe now let's talk about the type of paralysis seen in a umn lesion and type of paralysis in a element lesion so in a umn lesion we see a spastic type of paralysis and many people confuse this with the rigidity so please remember in umn you see spasticity we'll talk about spasticity and rigidity later so umn shows a spastic type of paralysis whereas an element shows a flaccid type of paralysis okay 
next reflexes so what do you think happens to reflexes in umn so reflexes in umn are exaggerated okay if there is a umn lesion we have exaggerated reflexes whereas in an element lesion it is decreased or absent even okay so uh, superficial reflexes like your abdominal and cremaceous reflex actually are absent in both whereas deep reflexes are exaggerated in human that deep reflexes include your biceps triceps uh, knee jerk and all of those so they are increased in element and decreased new human so another thing is atrophy the atrophy is worse in element because the muscle is not moving at all and new human it's okay uh, it, it is there definitely but it takes a little more time to come up now here's a little tricky point so fasciculations are small muscle twitches or small minute muscle movements okay that is seen in element and not in human okay because in element there is no nerve supply to the muscle so the local muscle electrical activity and the local muscle discharges can happen because there's no control and that's the only kind of movement you see in element so the only kind of movement you see in element is a are your fasciculation so to review once more firstly power reduced in both paralysis human shows a spastic type of paralysis whereas element shows a flaccid type of paralysis similarly because of this tone there is hypertonia in human the tone of the muscle is increased in human and flaccid in element so hypotonia in element fasciculation is seen only in element not seen in human the only muscular activity seen in an element palsy are fasciculations and last point atrophy is worse in element okay in human okay so this can get confusing so an easy way to remember is to think of the human or the brain and the higher centers as a parent and to think of the spinal cord element and the rest of the element as a child so the human is a parent and element is child so what happens normally your parents control you they stop you from doing unnecessary things they stop you from getting hyper and all that stuff so think about this so you have your mother at home and you at home and you're in control you're behaving well you're sitting there watching tv she goes out okay she goes out now the child is all alone at home so he's all hyper he's just jumping on the couch jumping on the sofa jumping on jumping wherever he wants okay and he's all excited so that is exactly how uh, the your lower motor neuron or the spinal cord begins to behave when the umn influence is removed so let's just review so umn palsy now there is no control from higher up so what do you think would happen to the type of paralysis so earlier what happened was your all the firing from the spinal cord is regulated and controlled by the umn so now you remove this control so when you remove this control like when you cut off this control then there it just keeps firing so the spinal cord keeps firing and you have a classical firing to the muscles and then you get a spasticity or a spastic type of hypertonia okay a spastic type of rigidity and a, a sorry spastic type of hypertonia so the tone is hypertonic because of irregular and unnecessary firing and no inhibitory response remember umn gives you inhibitory response so there's no inhibitory response so there's hypertonia and spasticity reflexes normally your reflexes are controlled and in exaggerated reflexes are inhibited by umn so when the umn is affected your there's nothing to control your reflexes so you have exaggerated reflexes okay so hypertonia spasticity and uh, this and uh, uh, exaggerated reflexes are seen in human paralysis because all these three things happen because of lack of inhibition okay so there is lack of inhibition which leads to these kind of abnormal responses hypertonia due to abnormal firing spasticity because of hypertonia and abnormal firing and uh exaggerated reflexes because there's no control over reflexes the parent is gone so the child is just firing so so that's a easy way to remember i'll just put this picture so you can remember always umn is like the parent element is like the child so when there's no umn there's no control so everything is exaggerated and uh, out of control now to think about how to remember element so what are the classical features you have flaccidity it's very easy to remember this because just think about it just give me a second yeah so just look look into this diagram once more so the only electrical activity or the only stimulus which goes to the muscle is through the element right so now if i have a lesion here right anywhere on this element there is no electrical activity or no electrical stimulation for this muscle so what do you expect this muscle to do even if your brain says shoot 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 and he's sending all all the electrical activity here it goes up to here and stops so there's no one controlling this there's nothing going here so 
there is no electrical activity even the abnormal spinal firing even when the spinal cord fires it cannot reach there so there is flaccidity and hypotonia because there is no supply there is no electrical activity so it just weak it just you know falls down because there is no uh, there is no uh, nothing to uh, stimulate this muscle so the muscle just falls and then local electrical impulses are there and electrolyte imbalances which lead to a few small twitches of fasciculation so remember flaccidity and hypotonia because there's no electrical supply nothing going at all look at it there's nothing going at all if this is affected so and fasciculation is due to local so uh, due to the local uh, involvement so yeah coming back here reduce power flaccidity loss of reflexes obviously because uh, again let's just look at it there's suppose we stimulate here the sensory system says okay reflex reflex our starts but it cannot go forward because there's no there's no neuron connecting to the muscle so loss of reflexes yes loss of absence of re- loss and absence of reflexes weakness flaccidity hypotonia and quicker atrophy because of hypotonia is there so much disuse you know even at least in your human there's some muscle group firing so the disuse is slightly lesser so the atrophy is faster and worse case of an element so just review these points remember these points and it's really important to differentiate this it's a frequently asked question and that's the way to remember umn lesions there is no inhibitory uh, influence and because there's no inhibitory influence all the activity is excess and in element there is no influence at all the muscles are let to rot and uh, they just you know get flaccid and weak because there's no influence or no control over them at all lastly uh, what uh, we wanted to talk about was uh, again something which is frequently asked it is spasticity versus rigidity so always remember spasticity is also is both are types of hypotonia okay both are hypotonic but in spasticity only one of the muscle groups is involved okay and the complementary muscle group is not involved for example if the flexors are involved only the flexors are strongly involved and the extensors are not so strongly involved so that is spasticity and so only one muscle group is involved usually the flexors in upper limb and extensors in lower limb and you have classical posture because of that so one muscle group is involved and must one muscle group is hypertonic okay so there is some hypertonia it is also called clasp clasp knife rigidity because as like a clasp knife there is a initial resistance but once you give uh, initial re- resistance to passive uh, passively moving it and once you put a little pressure it gives way gives way so clasp spasticity is also class, called clasp knife rigidity it is seen when one muscle group shows hypertonia there is just involvement of one of the muscle groups the complementary muscle group is not as involved and spasticity is seen in umn or cortico spinal lesions coming to rigidity it is seen when both the muscle groups are involved okay both so your extensors and flexors are involved and the hand is completely rigid in both directions okay there are many types led by cogwheel and all that but what is important here is both or the complementary group is also involved so both muscle groups are involved and the second thing is this rigidity is classically seen in extra pyramidal lesions like in parkinsons and all those diseases so that is the difference between spasticity spasticity and rigidity this is also a frequently asked viva question uh, one more thing i forgot to add was babinski sign babinski so remember babinski is positive in in umn lesions and negative in element lesions so these six points you have to remember and it's very 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 frequently asked whether you take stroke whether you take any in respect of whichever cns case you take this is uh, frequently asked and it's kind of a long video but i hope you understood and i hope you remember the points uh, that i mentioned here if not just look through uh, this this slide is the most important knowing your human element is important so you understand better but knowing these points is really important hope it was helpful bye